Normal and diabetic blood sugar ranges. Normal blood sugar levels for patients without diabetes versus normal blood sugar for people with diabetes are totally different. The same thing applies to normal or target goal A1C levels. Even within the diabetic population, A1C goals will have to be individualized. Let's talk more. Hello everyone, if you are looking for exclusive deals, blogs, educational content every week delivered to your email, subscribe to our newsletter at sugarmds.com right now. What is normal fasting blood sugar levels? Well, a fasting blood sugar, sometimes called fasting plasma glucose, is a blood sugar without eating or drinking anything except for water for at least eight hours. That's the definition of fasting. In normal non-diabetic individuals, normal fasting blood sugar is typically less than 99 milligram per deciliter. And I'm sorry guys, I live in USA and I use USA measurements. If you are using millimole per liter type of glucose measurement, I will leave a conversion table in the description of this video below for you to refer to. Anyway, a fasting blood sugar of 100 to 125 milligram per deciliter is indicative of prediabetes. On the other hand, relatively normal blood sugar for a patient with diabetes can be less than 120 milligram per deciliter at fasting. A fasting blood sugar again is a blood sugar without eating or drinking for eight hours so what is normal blood sugar for a diabetic then right well of course the lower the better however achieving normal blood sugar goal of 90 milligram per deciliter or below fasting blood sugars for example for patients with diabetes is not always achievable safely what i mean by that is that the fasting blood sugar target will need to be individualized for certain people based on certain factors, such as risk factors. Now, these factors could be the duration of diabetes, the age, the life expectancy, the cardiovascular risk, chronic conditions such as chronic kidney disease or chronic liver disease or cirrhosis, and the risk of low blood sugars as well as their cognitive status. Now, your normal blood sugar may not be the same as the person next to you. For example, an 85-year-old man, 85-year-old man who has an end-stage kidney disease does not have to be forced to have a blood sugar of 90 mg per deciliter. The younger and the healthier you are, the stricter your blood sugar should be. Now, what is a normal blood sugar after eating? Well, normal blood sugar level after eating is typically lower than 140 mg per deciliter in normal non-diabetic individuals. Now, blood sugar level between 140 and 199 is considered to be pre-diabetes. And if the blood sugar is over 200 mg per deciliter, will suggest diabetes. The goal of blood sugar after meals for diabetic patients is less than 180 in general. Although in my practice, I recommend blood sugar levels of less than 160 two hours after meals if it is safely achievable. If you can keep your blood sugar levels below 180 mg per deciliter, you can achieve an A1C goal of 7% or less. Now, if you are less than 160, then you can achieve an A1C goal of less than 6.5. Again, this target may need to be individualized for everybody depending on the person, such as duration of their diabetes, their age, their life expectancy, their cognitive status, and other health conditions and so forth. It is important that people with diabetes discuss actually their blood sugar level with their endocrinologist. That's the best person to see at least a few times to get things normalized. Now, what is normal or goal A1C for a diabetic? Well, let's talk about the A1C for a quick second. It's a blood test that provides average glucose levels in the last three months. If you have a normal blood sugar level, you will also have a normal A1C level. Now, if you want to know more about A1C, we have a lot of in-depth A1C explanation videos, so please refer to them. Now, there are a variety of different ways of saying that this test like A1C, you can call it glycated hemoglobin, you can call it hemoglobin A1C, A1C, whatever. 
But good thing about the A1C test is that patient, first of all, does not need to be fasting before their A1C because it's really measuring your fasting or after meals all together for the last three months. It is reported as a percentage, as you know. The higher the percentage, the higher the blood sugar level. Now, for example, 7% A1C corresponds to 150 mg per deciliter blood sugar on average. And each 1% increase in your A1C suggests a 30 mg per deciliter increase in average blood sugar levels. Now, A1C tests will tell your physician what your average blood sugars have been, including all the highs and lows, although it gives an average. A1C is not necessarily the best test because it does not really tell you anything about blood sugar fluctuations. In addition to that, A1C tests may not always be even accurate for some people, including those people with hemoglobin problems like blood count problems, such as people with thalassemia or sickle cell anemia and so forth. Some patients who are under treatment for HIV, some nations such as African American, Mediterranean, Southeast Asian, they may have genetically abnormal A1C in certain cases. Now, in addition to being a great tool for diagnosing diabetes, we use the A1C to actually manage people with diabetes, provided that they do not have an inherent problem with their A1C. But it's just one of the many tools. So if you haven't done yet, by the way, like we have an app, as you know, on the Apple Store and Google Play Store called Sugar MD App, download it right now you will have access to all of our videos all of our articles you're going to have access to electronic blood sugar log graphic analysis food and carb dat database and so forth so go for it what are the a1c goals for patients with diabetes well like many major guidelines we also agree that a1c goal should be less than seven for in general you know a, a regular adult but you don't have to go with that definition. A lower goal, such as less than 6.5% or even 6%, may be appropriate for some people. Now, lower A1C goal is for those people who had the diabetes at a shorter amount of time. They are younger, for example, and those people without heart disease or people with uh, type 3 diabetes and they're basically on lifestyle and metformin only, they don't need a lot of medications, it's perfectly fine to bring their A1C as low as possible. Now, A1C goal of 8% or more sometimes may be okay for someone with limited life expectancy or somebody who cannot understand that their sugar is too low. Now, other reasons for high A1C goals are uh, if they have excessive complications, they cannot tolerate low blood sugars, or when you try to bring the A1C down, they get into trouble. So for those people, we keep the A1C a little bit higher. Now, people with diabetes should always discuss their target glucose with their endocrinologist instead of coming up with their own ideas. Now, can I test and diagnose myself with diabetes via finger stick? I get that question a lot. Well, the fasting blood sugar or two-hour post-meal blood sugar and A1C test, they're, they're important ways to screen and diagnose diabetes. But if you think you if you have diabetes, I do not recommend checking the blood sugar on a finger stick it is important to not to diagnose yourself by doing a finger stick only because uh, these home meters are not always accurate or, or standardized. There are standards that laboratories use for diagnosing diabetes. Therefore, I think you should ask your doctor's office to test you at a laboratory to make sure. It is also important to talk with your diabetes doctor or endocrinologist to make sure that you know how often you should check your blood sugar, uh, such as it could be sometimes only fasting blood sugars or every three month A1C test or before and after tests and so forth. And you should understand what your results mean, what your A1C mean, what your targets are. If you haven't been previously diagnosed with diabetes or prediabetes or even insulin resistant, if your results are above normal, then your diabetes doctor or your endocrinologist may recommend some other testing, including two-hour glucose tolerance tests and A1C tests. Now, treatment, of course, will include lifestyle changes at first, some weight loss, 
is some healthy diabetic eating plan and regular exercise will be your best bet to begin with. You may need to start taking diabetes medications or sometimes supplements or herbs. Again, if you're not into medications, we have a sugar MD supplement class that are unbeatable in efficacy. Sometimes we use insulin, of course, you know, in clinical practice, if people cannot afford anything else or if that's the only thing they, that work for them, if they are dieting and exercising and doing everything else. Now, when should you get checked for diabetes? If you're 45 or higher, you should get screening. Now, if it is normal, then every three years would be okay to screen for diabetes. Now, if you have diabetes risk factors, such as you know your family history, etc., or you have uh, quite a bit of obesity and so forth, or you had a gestational diabetes when you were pregnant, for example, you know, like I said, certain races and ethnicities like African Americans or Latino population or some even Asian population can be more susceptible to getting diabetes. So if you have these risk factors, sometimes we actually screen people a lot earlier. We even screen children and adolescents who have either diabetes symptoms or who are super overweight with risk factors as well. You're not gonna believe, but some of these kids will already have signs of pre-diabetes, such as acantosis nigricans, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. It is sad to see that. Another important risk factor, again, mother having a gestational diabetes will definitely put the children or their kids at risk for early diabetes as well. So watch out for signs and symptoms of diabetes beginning at the age of 10 and then every three years for those kids. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.